bites people. He will if he has me, yeah. It's been avoided. Try to take him off the couch before training and really try to take him off the couch. You, I think you would be honest with us. If you were being honest with us, I think you would know that he would bite. He also doesn't like to be combed or anything he doesn't like. He, I think he feels free to use his teeth to tell you whether that is just a little chatter on your shirt or on your skin or a nip. Um, so, what I did is I kept asking him to allow me to do this until he submitted to it. This is submission. Until he allowed me to do it, right? And he's allowing me to do it. I, I, he didn't bite me or anything like that. But he comes back with his teeth at the object that he doesn't want to touch him. That's a sign of a dog who's going to bite eventually. If we don't, if you're aware of it though, it's a disagreement bite. That's the, that's the thing about it. It's just like, I'd rather you not. And that, in my book, gets, that gets punished. And if, here's the thing, if you go to punish that, does he bite you back? Does he correct you for correcting him? And that all depends on your relationship. He could, or maybe he won't, because he perceives you as above, and his best thing to do is this, just relax. Yeah, absolutely. You know what the cure for this is? Respect. Once he respects you, then you don't see the problem. Respects your home. But you can't send him the message that he owns the house. You can't. He's a predator. You can't do that. He's, he's, he's going to then be protect, protective and have an opinion and use his teeth to disagree. You have to have him believe when he's first going home the kennel's your spot. And I don't want to hear any fuss in the kennel, right? The problem here is that this guy's been catered to so much. I mean, this guy goes and plays in the field, local to us, and then goes through a three to four mile hike after that, day regularly. Um, but he's thinking about using his teeth on you when you ask him to get off the couch. You keep that going, he's just gonna bite you one day right in the face. Right in the face. And you're gonna be like, I can't believe that happened. And I'm gonna be like, I can believe that happened. He needs to be put in his place. Do you understand what I'm saying? Bottom of the pack. Exist there, change the mentality, and then we'll loosen up on you. Otherwise, somebody's gonna get hurt. It's just gonna happen. It's how about a lot of the biting dogs we see, they're not from shelters. They're not from a bad background. They're entitled and they're spoiled. And they're just confident and they just have the right genetical makeup where they decide to use their teeth. And if it's successful, if he growls and snarls at you and you leave him alone, then you're not gonna get bit. So you, yeah, you can live with this dog without getting bit, but you gotta kiss his toes. That's already happening. As soon as somebody steps in his life and says, nah, I ain't kissing your toes, kiss my toes. Well, now we have a different story. Now we have a dog who's going to use his teeth because nothing else is working. And the thing is, if you try to toughen up, if you try to toughen up and say, that's it, I'm, uh, Josh is right. I'm not gonna allow this anymore. And you go in and, and he growls and you're like, nope, not today, get off the couch. And then he snarls even heavier and you're like, wow, I haven't seen that before, but not today. And then he bites you and then you're like, okay, today. And now he says, you know what, growling and snarling doesn't work, I'm just gonna bite her. And not just for the couch, for everything. It can all be avoided if he just gets what he wants all the time. Or, we, we change his lifestyle, we take control of everything. What he does, how he does it, all the resources, until he's changed the way he, he associates you, your home, and your community, and then we ease up. But we can always tighten him back up, and that's the secret. So there's consequences for small little rules. He's going home into boot camp. And get it done now, because how old is he? A year and a half, two? He's a biting dog, I'm telling you right now, okay? Um, if I see him at five, if he would have waited until he was five, I guarantee he had bites on his record. Guaranteed. I, 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 I knew that he was a biting dog without saying it. I had the vibe. The first session. Out of frustration. He would just bite because I was frustrated. Why not? Never been told not to. Also, it's not all your fault. I want you to know that. Part of it is because somebody was willing to sell it to you at eight weeks old. So it missed all of its adolescence of being 
put in its place within amongst the pack. I've never had experienced that before. That's why it's so freaking bad. That's why all these dogs are so bad. They don't experience that from the, even their own kind, and then they don't experience it from humans. So they just are the kings. They are the the, the lions that control the, the den. You know, they're the kings, and they really believe it. <laughs> so every day when he's out, of, when he's in his kennel, first thing we do when we go home, we make sure he's calm in his kennel. Yes, even when you're home, it's not about. Well, does he have to be in the kennel? It's the message we're sending to him. Yeah, you do. Because every time, what I'm doing is I'm creating a home base in the kennel. I know when you're there, you're calm, you're quiet, and I know that you're not having any unwanted or unnecessary uh, experiences. Making yourself feel elevated, walking around the house freely, putting your tail up, looking out the windows, going from room to room. Like, no, no, not with a dog like this. And it shouldn't happen with puppies anyway. This is all, like people, people, when they get dogs, they don't know how to raise them. I'm convinced. They look, say, what can I do to give the dog the most fun life? And that's where they put their focus, rather than like, let's get the mechanics down of this leadership thing and make sure I got you under my thumb. And then let's have some worry about the extracurricular stuff, you know? So, kind of home base, that's where you are, baby. That's, that's it for now. And then we're also going to teach you how to be in the living room on the place bed. And we're going to proof that and we're going to test that until there's no nonsense with the doors or anything. We got the kennel, we got the living room and wherever he goes, the bathroom, which is hopefully in the backyard. You teach him how to go out and use the bathroom and come back in. That's your baseline. Once you get that, then you work on a walk around your property, wherever, around, around your uh, local community. Preferably somewhere you don't get in the car yet. You just go out your door, you walk, and then you go back in. This is not free for all, you're home from training walk. This is animal to animal, do what I say every step of the way. And I'll give you freedoms, but then come back and do what I say every step of the way. The percentage of free time to structure is gonna be like 90% structure, okay? Like maybe even on the, on the walk, you know, I would say you take a couple stops where he can have some free time. And then it's back to the house, and then it's back on place. And if you don't feel like monitoring his behaviors back in the kennel, eventually, one day, this is all going to be perfect. One day soon. And you're going to go teach him how to get in the car, and how to behave in the car, and how to go somewhere new. Okay? And then he changes the way he thinks. He won't be in that biting mentality anymore. You know? Because this is just what they do if they see that you, if they think that they can push you around, a middle-of-the-road dog will. You know? He's just always going to want to be, have first access to all the resources. He wants to be in that position, just like all dogs do. He wants to be in that position too, but he accepted it years ago that he's not gonna have it if he lives with me. And now we don't see the problems. All the stuff that everyone else complains with, the, the, the leash reactivity, everything, the, the counter surfing, the, all the stuff, peeing in the house, all of it. And I didn't address them one-on-one. -on -one. You know what I'm saying? It's a relationship thing. Another thing, if he comes up on you hot and heavy, listen, he's a year and a half, he's gonna be an adult very soon. When you start treating him like an adult. And I know if you, if, you, if you got him because you like the relationship with the dog to be very much like an infant and baby-like, he's gonna struggle so fucking hard. We need him to mature and to be a big boy and knock off the bullshit. I get it, it's America. I know I'm talking, against, I'm preaching against the, the choir here. We want to focus on, if you're talking about a guy like me, I want to focus on my relationship with this dog to make sure I can bring him out in the world and he does exactly what I say when I say it. And then, when I have that stuff, then maybe we'll start learning some games like fetch and stuff. But that stuff is completely unnecessary and you don't need to wear out his energy for him to be respectful. It's a mentality thing. And if you're a soft person in life in general, this will be hard for you, but it might just be what you need to be able to start getting uh, you know, having the world treat you differently. He'll teach you. Because if you can lead him, you carry a certain presence and you'll be treated differently around, around uh, people as well. Okay? So something he doesn't like, that's all this is. I don't need to brush him. Again, I don't need to brush him. This isn't about the brushing. This is about the conversation of him not wanting it to happen and him being willing to think about using his teeth or even snapping at it because he doesn't like it. That is not pet or companion material, okay? Some further domestication, shall we?
that's good. That's what he's, that's his coping. Good. That's what he did naturally. Good. And I'm all, all for that. That's fine. But before the camera turned on, I think I did like three reps. And there was a little nip at this. Half-heartedly, because it's me. If it was any, if it was somebody with less respect, it wouldn't be half-heartedly. That's how that works. All right, he knows who he's gonna bite back. And the thing is, if I bite, what's the likelihood if I bite Josh that he's gonna retaliate? Probably pretty high. What's the retaliate? What's the, what's the, what's the, how likely is mom gonna be able, is, is she gonna respond to a retaliation or some type of consequence that I care about? Probably not much. That leads in you getting bit. That's why they, that's why people are like, if your dog knows you're weak. The thing is, is like, there's a little truth to that. If the dog knows that you're not game, they're gonna push you around. Not every dog's like this. He's like this. And that's what you need to concern yourself with. Okay, and that's, he's a fun dog. When he's, when he's doing what he wants to do, there is no problem. That is not why he's here. He's here because you say, get off the couch. And he says, mmm, to his human. That's like the worst thing. That is the biggest crime that he can be committing. He's trying to, he's threatening to bite the hand that feeds him. Uh, takes care of him like over the top takes care of him which you're not alone just about all of our client dogs are over pampered too like they got the special food the special bed the special toys we're doing this for our dog we put him through college we did all this stuff this guy got nothing look at that's not even his toy that's a Garrett Gordon Trans toy and he's happy because that's not how dogs work all you're creating is, a, is something that thinks that resources come to them so they must be freaking god because I get everything and then you get the entitled. And if you're doing that with a lab, you're just gonna get a dog who's got a lot of energy who jumps. If you're doing it with a shepherd or any other more difficult breed, they might start biting. So it's the message we send. We pamper, everybody knows it with kids. That's the thing. And they know it with dogs too. If you spoil them too much, you don't know, they're gonna be a brat. They won't listen. Everybody knows that. Why are we doing it? Why, are, why is our priority, and I know the answer, and I'll give it to you. And I'm not talking about you directly, but this is my, this is what I'm seeing. Why is it that we focus on only the stuff that the dog wants to do? Instead of the, the mechanics that make it necessary for this thing to listen to us in our house, in our homes, and out in the community. Why do we focus on, we don't focus on that. <laughs> Very rare people focus on that. We focus on what's fun. Because we're not doing it for the dog, folks. Ooh, plot twist. We're doing it for, the human's doing it for the human. The human's doing it because seeing the dog happy makes them feel happy. And this, fills the void of some type of void within a person's life, oftentimes. That's why people get dogs on a whim. Catch yourself and realize that's what you're doing. I did it too, man. I got dogs for selfish reasons, and I still have dogs for selfish reasons, but you have to understand that if it's so bad that it's getting in your way, you can't even correct it. You can't even, you can't even raise it in a way where there's tough love, and it's getting disciplined physically when needed, and you, you know, and you gotta think to yourself, well, I don't even know if I could physically discipline a shepherd, and why do you got it? Yeah? Maybe get something that's smaller that you could actually handle. This is just two people in public. So when we go home, we gotta work. Because this guy is a good dog. But I'm telling you right now, something bad's gonna happen eventually if we don't intervene. And it could end in, you know, somebody getting hurt, obviously. But if he does it enough, he goes bye bye. Okay? So take it seriously, that's what this message is for, because this isn't, this isn't unfortunately, this isn't all rainbows over here with him. He's got some issues that he hasn't fully developed. He's maturing into, he's a year and a half, he's maturing into this, but that's the direction he's headed in. So, it's not about the commands. It's not like, well, he went to school, so he learned how to read, so that means he's gonna be a good person. Nope, he learned how to read. Good, now what kind of books are is he reading, right? <laughs> We taught him the language. I gained respect. I showed him how to treat a human so he has experience with it. Now, the same dynamic needs to be built at home before we can go back to the loosey-goosey fun stuff. It just can't be that way with him with you because uh, he's going to bite you. That's, that's all I can say. Or somebody. you got to have him under our thumb. All right? Good. That's a better response. I know it's irritating to him. He doesn't like it, but he's letting me do it. And that's what you're supposed to do as a dog. See, just do that. That's it. That's all I want you to do. Now, if we do this with him, 
we could see this problem go away. Like he's always kind of going to be a dog who's okay with using it, which isn't a bad thing, but not with you and not with your family. You know, it is who he is, but he's, again, he's in the room. So I'm telling you, Riggins is a biting dog as well. <laughs> All right. He will, he has a, what I classify as a biting dog, because just about every dog will bite you. What I classify as a biting dog is a dog whose threshold for biting is much lower than the average dog, what you're looking for. Like the, a dog, the average dog doesn't try to bite you or the brush when you go to brush its head. <laughs> so he's below average with his threshold, which means he's a biting dog. The reason we say that is because that means he's more likely to bite than the average dog. And we know what it's about too. It's about he doesn't want to do something. Okay. That's the entitled part. That's why entitled dogs bite. Just like bratty kids bite and they throw things and they have temper tantrums. Bratty dogs will bite. They might not kill you. They might not rip your face off, but they'll sink their teeth into you if you try to take them off the couch. And then they'll tell you they love you right afterwards. And then that leaves the human so confused. Like, oh, we just had an argument and now we're not arguing. What's going on? Are we going to argue again in the future? Because people say... He's never bit me before. He just bit me when I tried to get him off the couch. And now he's, and then 15 minutes later, we're fine. It's like, yeah, he won the argument and I was moving on. He's not even thinking about it anymore. <laughs> he's just ready to, and next time the argument comes up, he's gonna put you in your place again, right? So this is for everybody out there who feels like, man, I feel like my dog's got some biting vibes under there. And the way you're existing with it is by not pushing him. Just let him stay on the couch or just let him do this or just, you know. Um, there's help out there, it should probably be taken care of because it's a liability and we hate to see people um, eventually one day out of nowhere, okay? They get bit. Okay, good job, Eli. This is, all right, so I know this is long and I know you, whatever, these videos go on lengthy sometimes, but I just need you to know, this was one experience he just, he just learned how to submit to, which I don't think he's ever done in his life. I think this guy, the majority of his life in order to move him around this, this earth or this little community has been bribes. So it's like, let's go do this thing you want to do. And then, uh, and then if you do this, I'll give you this, this kind of, this kind of thing. So nothing is like, you have to, without a doubt, do this. And he's never been submissive in this type of situation. So this was the first time which tells him how to do it in other situations that aren't the same, right? Next time we're having a disagreement, he's going to learn that if he does this and just allows me to do what I need to do, or just listens, um, which is the submissive part, the calm and submissive part, then he's out of the situation. There's no problem. Nobody's, nobody's going to do anything. But if he starts getting tense and if he starts uh, thinking about using his teeth, he's going to get corrected, right? So that's why he's going to choose to just allow you to do it, because it turns out that this right here isn't as bad as the correction, right? Like, nah, he doesn't like this, but the correction's worse, right? And the correct, when I say the worst, I don't mean like physically painful correction. It's a social disapproval is what I'm using with him. A little slippery pressure, but mainly I'm saying I'm using that eye contact and using all the social influence I've gained over him by living with him like this and just using it in that moment saying, no, and also my vibe is, go ahead, let's see what happens. I'm not afraid of him, and that, that's the, what I'm trying to say. I'm confident, but he knows I'm not afraid of him, and he knows I'm not afraid to, to let him bite my hand, right? That goes a long ways, but you're not gonna have to be that intense with him if we keep doing exercises like this, we keep going after the little moments like this, next thing you know, they all add up, and we have a, a dog who's submissive, He's just like, fine, I know how to do things I don't want to do. It's not that bad. I've matured. So we got to start talking like this to him and we find things he doesn't like. And we just do it and tell him he did a good job and lets us and disagree with him, you know? Yeah. I don't yell at him either. You're like, like, there's a time and a place to raise your voice at a dog. But during this, what I'm doing is I'm shushing. I built that sound up to mean relax before I did this. I'm not just grabbing a dog that I don't know and I'm just combing it and then correcting it for not letting me comb it, but that's like grooming, right? Um, I am grooming him, but 
notice this isn't how it would go in this salon, right? He'd be, he'd have all this, everything would be tied and then they'd just be doing their job. This is a mental game. Good boy. I like that response that he goes down, but sometimes he thinks about using his teeth still. But he hasn't opened his mouth. That's good. And that's appreciated. Okay, another thing he's weird about. What's rule number one? Stay calm. That's right. And don't assume you can just get up and do things, move around unless I told you you can freely move around or to go somewhere directly. You can't just pick up, that's the moment right there. You can't just be like, oh, we're done, and like, I'm gonna do my own thing. That's, that's error, error, error. And that's what I'm saying to him constantly, that's wrong. Your follower always now, it's permanent. And there's times within that following that I'm gonna give you freedom with rules. But the freedom comes when I say you're free. It's not just, I'm always free, but sometimes you ask me to do things. It's, I'm always doing things that you want me to do, and sometimes I do my own thing. Flip it. And that's, the, that's how you get success with any dog, but especially with a guy who thinks about biting because he's a brat. I mean, animal to animal, if we went at it, you know, I think he knows, I'd hope he'd know that I would win. I hope. I know that I would win. I think he knows that I would win too. Now, but he didn't even know that when he came in. He thinks he's so powerful because of the way he lives. I mean, people, I mean, I just imagine waking up and getting grapes handed to me. I'm just getting my coffee handed to me. You know, I don't even have to get up to pee anymore. Somebody does that for me. And you start to feel, I listen, I've had my ego days where I felt very, ha-ha, Josh. And it's because the people around me made me feel that way. And then I get around people that, I, that, that, that humble you. <laughs> and that's what's happening here. A little humble, slice of humble pie, balancing them out. But he needs to have this relationship with you going home where you're not just a plaything with thumbs that, that opens the world up for him and the fridge. You are the state trooper. You are to be respected first and foremost. That is our objective. Everything after that is icing on the cake. Yeah, we'll go and have a good time. Because eventually, a year down the road, and I'm encouraging a year of this with this guy, you're, gonna, you're not gonna have to do this. He will be able to make his own choices. He will have the, the freedom. You're not gonna have to be doing it like this. You'll have him already the way you want him to be, okay? So thank you for putting up with me. We're passionate about this because we see the same problem over and over again, and, and it is likely to drive a man crazy after a few, after multiple years. And, you know, we're over half a decade doing this now. You see the same stuff over and over again. We make the same videos over and over again. But in these days, we're going more in depth and we're talking like this. And maybe we're even getting some people upset by the way that I'm talking because we're not making a difference enough. We're making a local difference, which is great, but it's the same problem in every in every house. And so that's why videos like this come out. That's why they come out strong. If you knew what I see and how often I see it and how it's the same thing going on in every house, um, eventually you're like, okay, let's talk real on the videos and stop sugarcoating it as much so that people can understand where problems are going wrong. A lot of, a lot of it happens when people get a dog they can't handle and then they have to play catch up. I have to look at the skills because I don't have them yet to handle the animal I'm living with. And that's like, that's like everybody, dude because they're not basing, they're not getting the breed that's compatible with their personality. They're getting, the, they're getting it for a different reason. I had one as a kid, it's pretty. Um, I rescued it, <laughs> I had all these different reasons. And then you start from the beginning, you're like, I already don't have the skills for this animal. As soon as it evolves to a year, I'm already in over my head, so now I have to catch up. I have to get it training, I have to get trained. God, and now I have the kids and the job. That, to me, if, while we're being honest, that's irresponsible. Get, I, I, I think you should, no one's going to listen to me, but I think I think that it should be when you get a dog, you should devote a, a at least a year or to three to the dog and get your relationship and that dog where you need it to be. The raising process from when you get it till when it's an adult. There's a lot of attention and effort that needs to go into learning how to lead this dog. Not learning how to play frisbee with it, not go getting it into like all these clubs and stuff. Like I know, I know these dogs because I know the, the most, the dogs who are the most active that do the most fun shit are the most brattiest dog I've ever met in my life and the most likely to bite. Just go talk around like dogs on TV and shit, they're usually assholes, you know? Because everybody's just like, get the dog some water, get them like, <laughs> any animal's gonna act that way. So, so he acts different in this pack because he understands that every single living thing in, in here is above.
and that's how it has to be at home going home. It's just the say, it's just the way to make the real change. Otherwise, it's just zapping him when he does stuff wrong, but he's always gonna have it under the hood. All right. All right, my man, I'm proud of you. You're, you're, you're getting there. You're getting there. Yes, this is good. You see this? He's being patient. It's new for him. We're gonna find more situations like that. I, I, you know, the only one I found is touching him back here. If you're experienced, you already know that he thought that he he doesn't like it. See, he doesn't like it, but that's okay. I'm not hurting him, you know. And I'm not going to hurt him. I'm just simply going to ask him to trust me. Ah, he relaxed just now. I just felt his muscles relax. And then I come over here and show them that I like that relaxation. But if, listen, he's letting me do this and he's going to end up being really comfortable with me and we're going to be tight. We're going to have a bond over this. But if he's seen me as somebody that he could push around and I didn't stop, I think he would tell me by growling first. So he got that. Uh, but if he's really frazzled, I think he would just nip. <laughs> I think he would nip. I really do. I really do. Right? Imagine trying to do something your kid doesn't want to do, like put on a shirt and it just punches you in the face. And you're like, well, I guess we're just not going to put shirts on. <laughs> Whatever. Like, you, no, you punish your kid for, for hitting you, hopefully. And then they stop hitting you. And the side effect is that they let you put the shirt on. The side effect is that they let you do other stuff, not just put the shirt on. But nobody wants to do that because we're, we're not animals anymore, right? We're people, which makes us different than animals. That's good. This is all, if we can go into a massage, we can go into a massage. It's good. Do I get any old school trained trainers on here watching? When you come in and you bring your hand here and the paw flies up, disagreement. It's disagreement. And right after that, you know, that's where... If I didn't have influence over him, that's where we have some problems. But that's controlling my hand. Okay? So all those little things. Him allowing me to do this is huge for us. He learns to trust me because I'm going to touch him in places that he doesn't like to be touching, but he's going to notice I'm not there to harm you. And he's also going to learn if there's any kickback, I'm going to get it anyway. Relax. And he will, because I'm fair. You know, I'm not over here doing something stupid to him. I'm just massaging him. But you would be surprised, a dog who's dominant. Listen, dominant dogs don't want to be sniffed in the butt when they go. You ever notice that? Oh, they want to sniff the butts, but they don't want their butt sniffed. Right? Because the first one to do the sniffing is the dominant one. The first one to get sniffed is the more submissive one, right? So me coming down here and doing playing with this stuff, he doesn't even want dogs back there. So we're gonna be healing more, everything's connected. If he starts to loosen up about this stuff, and I can have Rubens come over here and sniff him, and if he gives us any shit, we're gonna have a problem. These exercises go very far, and it's what I do with my personal dogs if we have a relationship issue, or if they have dog issues. This is my good boy, I'm very proud. I really am. But, but it doesn't mean, shh, but it doesn't mean that we're gonna be cuddling right now. That's not what this means. Everything for him is play, cuddle, me, 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 fun, 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 fun. There's never like, you know, knock it off. Okay, look, this is, this is knock it off. This is relax and let me do whatever I'm doing. And you don't know what I'm doing. I know you don't get it. I'm talking to him, he doesn't, he's like, what are you talking to? I'm talking to him, boom. But I'm massaging him and I've asked him not to move. And I've done it politely. You know, I didn't throw him to the ground. I started with the calm to get him in that mindset. And then right here, so look. We're gonna go touching around here a little bit for this particular guy. I don't do this with every dog, but this is what he needs. You see, he just shh. Shh. I'm putting tension on my hand and the leash, and then it releases when his mind relaxes. Okay, when he says, says fine, go back to what you're doing, which is going into the pause. Maybe don't do this at home either. Okay, that's good. He's giving you a leg. It's, it's, it's improving our relationship tremendously. 
And yeah, this is gonna be a long session. We already played outside a little bit and did some stuff outside, but we noticed that we noticed that attitude under there and we noticed just he needs to be submissive. He needs to learn how to be submissive. And so this is a start. So like calm is good, but calm and submissive. You, you used to hear the dog whisperer say that all the time, Susan Milan. Because submissive means that you that when we say passive and disengage, that's what we mean by submissive. You're just allowing whatever situation is unfolding, you're just allowing it to unfold, whether it's being combed or it's somebody coming in the door. But you're not being confrontational. You don't have uh, any concerns about it. You're just submissive to it. You let it be. And so calm and submissive is different than just calm too, right? And this is a good boy. And this is what you, you know, your dog should be able to be submissive to you like this. Without a tree, without something in it for him. We started this conversation. The reason why this is important. We started this conversation by, with something he didn't want to happen. And then we ended it with him of just allowing me to do it. It's not... Here's something you don't want to happen. Let me go get something to make it better, like peanut butter, and then get it. You, you're getting the, what you do is you get the job done of whatever you get done, nails or whatever. But you don't, you don't solve the problem. This solves the problem for me in my relationship with him. And it might even now because I've bridged the gap, it'll be easier for another human to come in and take the same position with him. But the fr person who does it first has the hardest job. Let me tell you, that's why they come here. Right. Good boy. And I also want to like also check on the dogs. Now, all the dogs, you like to look them over, give them once overs, um, just because we're on hiking trails and stuff, you know? He should be okay with somebody just taking a look, just taking a peek. And if he's sore, he can let me know. If, he's, if he goes, ooh, like a little yup, that's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll note that and say something sore. But nothing sore, you know? See, it's a, he doesn't want the dog to sniff him back there either. That's why he's in the corner all the time. And what he does, if you notice, if you watch him in the yard, his ass is against the wall and he's out. And then he comes out and interacts when he gets tempted enough. And as soon as the, he starts to get sniffed, he's out. He's like, I, you know, doesn't want it to happen. He needs to learn to let dogs sniff him too. But this is, this is me bridging the gap there because I'm essentially producing the same discomfort of not wanting to be examined back here. Yes. Yes. All right. He did it. And he did it for a long period of time. <clears throat> Good boy. He wonders, can I get up? Good boy. Very proud. Very nice. I'm going to release him. And I want him to. I want it. I'm hoping that he comes up to my personal space a lot more respectful than he did 20 minutes ago or 30 minutes ago, whenever. He got let out of his kennel before this exercise. I tried to um, have him come over to say hi, and it was just disrespectful. Happy, dominant, confident, doormat-like disrespect. You know? Not like just silly and I'm not aware of the rules, more just like, I'm a big bad guy, and how you doing? And, and then he jumped up on me, and that's when I said, we have relationship things that we need to clear up that are not just the commands. You need to know when you have free time, there's rules to free time. You can't put your paws up here on me, right? And it's just his association to the leash and all that added up like we're going on a walk. Because we were going to go until he did that and now we didn't even go out. Now we're working on that, okay? Believe it or not, that's working on jumping, right? Break. That's, that's good. That's an awesome response. This is, I know this doesn't look beautiful to you guys, but that was the most beautiful thing I've seen from him. I took one finger, it was my middle finger, because he went up on my dog. This, I have to do this with him right now. Break doesn't mean just go check stuff out, okay? If I see more respect and he, he didn't bridge the gap so quick and put a head over top of him, I wouldn't have took the opportunity. I did that because it was an opportunity and I wanted to see how he responded to me correcting him. If I correct him and he does not even think about using his teeth on me, I, I feel very good that that did something. I'm pretty convinced that if before that exercise, if I were to pass him like that, 
he would have came back with a reflex with his teeth. He might not have nabbed me, but he might have just said a quick little thing like that. I didn't see him do that just now, which tells me he's getting what I'm saying to him. That's a good boy. That's why I was happy. That's why I was happy. Because that's what I care about. I care about what do you do after being corrected? Do you strike back or do you just listen and relax? You listen and relax, good, great. I'm not upset about the, the silly mistake, that's fine. Mistakes happen. Good job, I just wanna make sure the system's intact so that there's no fuss with the system going home. Because there's gonna be fuss with lifestyle as it is. That was the best thing I've seen, so I shared this with him. Yeah, I like that, that was good. So that also, I stood up for my dog, right? Uh, it also is just a reminder that you're behind everybody here. You're not running the show and, and nobody's getting moving out of the way to do something for you special, that you're just following the pack, okay? All right, that was really good. That's my man. I'm gonna let him up again though, I know, I know. Because to me it's important to see if he learned anything there. Um, he needs to learn eventually, which he's doing right now. How to not be disrespectful out of a command, okay? Great. Wow, that was nice for him. That was really nice for him. That was really nice. Because normally, the re if you want to know what he normally does, it's whoom, and he's gone. He just starts doing whatever he wants, and he takes off. He just rounds the door or something, you know? Whatever he wants. But now he's learning to look. He's just hanging out. And the next step is, like, this is all fine and dandy, but the, I believe the next step is now we have to go do something as a pack, you know? He spends time with the pack. He's not just going to go on the count. He's not going to hang out with me and, and uh, my buddy Riggs. And we're going to go do something as a pack together to show him the benefits of allowing me to lead as well. So everything's balanced out. So we're going to go and do a little something together. Just whatever it is. Just something pack like. Maybe we'll go for a little walk. And then that will close off the session. Okay? And I don't think we're going to see many issues. Uh, and it's all just going to be asking for respect. I'm not even going to concern myself with a tight heel or anything. I just want... Today's lesson to be respect and be aware of how much energy you have as soon as you step into anybody's personal space. You shouldn't be plowing into their legs. No, no, no. And you should, and you should slow down far before you get up on a dog because that'll get you in trouble. You should start, start slowing down from quite a distance and come up very polite. Don't, don't make the first thing you do when you come up with a dog is, let me sniff your ass because I want to see if I can dominate you. Make it, hi, I'm Eli and I'm social distancing. <laughs> yeah, this is a good boy. There's a reason I have Riggins out here too. It's to make me feel more powerful because I have a dog here already that's under my influence. And that, that goes a little ways. See, this is more respectful. Did you see him sniff though and lean his head into Riggins out of curiosity rather than just jamming his head in his, in his crotch? All right, these are the small little beginning steps to show me that he's headed in the right direction. That's a good boy. Nice, right? Very proud. Good boy. Shh. Shh. Good. Nice. You never see that problem? That's good. Let's go.